Let us prove this equation by using mathematical induction. It says the sum from r equal 1 to n of 2 plus 3r is equal to n divided by 2 times, and in bracket here we have 3n plus 7. Now, what I want you to do is to pause the video and prove it. But just before you do that, just a few reminders. You have some steps you're going to take. Let me write them down here. So, step one, you will show that P1 is true. You must start off right from 1. Remember this is a statement in Pn. So P1 is true and n is 1. Then step 2 you assume that Pk is true. You don't specify any number. So you just use k is true. Then, step 3, you will prove that the, the term after the kth term is true. So, you should prove that pk plus 1 is true. Alright? And the other thing, this involves a sum, a series. So you see the R equal 1 to N. You will be saying R equal 1 to K when you assume or show that, well, assume PK is true. Then after that, you go to PK plus 1. You will be summing from R equal, well, this should be 1. So this is r equal 1 to k. Then you show that r equals 1 to k plus 1 is true. Then for the next step, the fact that you have an r equal 1 to n means you know exactly what r equal 1 to k looks like. So you break this up into two parts. So you're going to sum from r equals 1 to k plus the k plus 1 term. All right? So, just hints and reminders to help you out. So, use those and go ahead and prove it. Okay, have you finished? Now, let us go ahead with it. So, here, you are going to show that P1 is true. Now, remember, at P1, R is 1. So, 2 plus 3 times 1 equal. N also happens to be 1. 1 over 2 times 3, N, 3 by 1 7. Alright? So, 3, 1, 3, 4, 5, that's 5, equals 3 times 1 is 3. 3 plus 7 is 10. 10 over 2 is 5. Good. Show it is true. Here, you do not need to show that P2 is true or that P3 is true and so on, right? Just that P1 is true. I'm just going to erase this and go to the next step. So I can't be bothered with scrolling up and down to see this, right? If you're going to be taking notes, just go back and write down what I did a while ago. Now, remember, R is 
1, then R becomes 2, then R becomes 3, then R becomes 4, then R becomes 5, then R becomes 6, and so on and so forth. But if you're adding up to 6 terms, N would be 6. But it doesn't mean that R is 6. R is 1 plus 2, then 3, then 4, then 5. Well, in the first term, R is 2 plus 3 by 1. The second term, R is 2 plus 3 by 2. The so third term, R is 2 plus 3 by 3, and so on and so forth, right? Now, N is going to be the last term that you reach. You're adding up 6 of them, and it would be 6, right? Just to clarify that. Now, you assume that um, PK is true. So, assume PK is true. To show that, you sum from R equals 1 to K of 2 plus 3 r you rewrite r you don't change r to anything you keep r as it is the only thing you do is change n to k so what's going to happen n changes to k that's what's going to happen so this n has changed to k already so this n and this n will each change to k so it's k over 2, 3k plus 7. That's what you have there. So you must show that. Alright, that's the second step. I'm going to erase this and then go to the third step. You're going to prove that pk plus 1 is true. Let me erase this and go to the third step. So, prove that PK plus 1 is true. Alright. So, what you're going to do is to change N to K plus 1. K plus 1 would be the term that comes after K. So, you say the sum from R equals 1. So k plus 1 of 2 plus 3r right, equals k plus 1 divided by 2 times 3, k plus 1, put it in bracket, plus 7. Alright, now we work on this. Look at this. From R equal 1 to K plus 1. It's like you're saying you're summing up from R equals 1 to 6. This is the same as summing up from R equals 1 to 5 plus the 5 plus 1 term. Which is the 6th term, right? You add the first term plus the second term plus the third term plus the fourth term plus the fifth term plus the sixth term, which is the five plus one term. Now you're going to do the same thing with this. And of course, R equal 1 to K is what you're going to change this to. So let's just get rid of this and say that. This is equal to the sum from r equals 1 to k of 2 plus 3r plus the k plus 1 term. Alright? Now, that will be equal to. Now, remember. It's the same thing as you have up here. K plus 1 over 2 times 3. In fact, let me just rewrite this as a square bracket to make it different from 
the other bracket, 3, k plus 1, plus 7. All right. So there you have that. But question is, what is the k plus 1 term? Well, remember, the first term is 2 plus 3 by 1. The second term is 2 plus 3 by 2. The third term is 2 plus 3 by 3. And so on. Now, here, the k plus 1th term is going to be, well, let's see what the k plus 1th term is. It's going to be 2 plus 3 times k plus 1. Right. Let me write this as square bracket. So it's k plus 1. Alright? See that? No. Here. This part right here You need to rewrite it in a form where you don't have the summation so that everything can be written um, in such a way that you can simplify it and you show that the left hand side and the right hand side are the same. All right? No, here it means we're going to rewrite. This part that says the sum from R equal 1 to K of 2 plus 3R. We do that. Well, the sum from R equal 1 to N of 2 plus 3R is equal to N over 2, 3N plus 7. So if we're going from 1 to K, it would be K over 2, 3K plus 7. Alright? So, it is K over 2, 3K plus 7. Just that we write it just like this one up here, but we change n to k. Alright? Alright, so we plus. Well, this is 2 plus 3 k plus 1 equals. Uh, and we have k plus 1 over 2, 3k plus 1 plus 7. All right. We simplify them now. Now, we want to show that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Let us... Do some simplification to both sides. They make them a bit simpler. Suppose we say this is k over 2 times 3k plus 7. But hold on. This is the same thing as k by 3, k plus 7 over 2, right? Plus, alright, this is 2 plus 3 times k is 3k plus 3 times 1 is 3. But then we have 3 plus 2, alright? It's going to be 3 plus 2. But 3 plus 2 is 5. So this amounts to 5. Alright? So we have that part. This is equal to... Um, yeah. Let's write this as k plus 1 divided by 2. Alright, let's write round bracket now. 3 times k is 3k plus 3 times 1 is 3 plus 
7. What? What is 3 plus 7? 3 plus 7 is 10. So let's write this as 10. Right? We'll move this a little closer. Alright. Now, if we have all of this over 2, it's the same thing as if we extend this line and put everything over 2. Right? Similar to having everything here over 2. Now, here. Look at this. We have k plus 1 in bracket. Let's put the bracket there. Times 3k plus 10. Or all over 2 on the right. On the left hand side, we can do some amount of fraction. Now, we could draw a line here and find the LCM. Work it out that way. This over 1. LCM is 2. But um, you could do that. But let me use common denominators. Because the LCM method is where um, it, it, it comes from the common denominator. So let's multiply both the top by 2 and the bottom by 2. 2 by 1. Well, this would be just 2. Alright? So, both denominator and numerator multiplied by 2. And you know, when you have this over 2 plus that over 2, it's the same thing as saying this plus that, both over 2, right? We're going to have k, 3k plus 7, plus 2, 3k plus 5, over 2. All right, and then that is equal to k plus 1, 3k plus 10 over 2. You see that? Now, let's see if we can simplify the left, the left hand side. Seems more complicated than the right hand side. K times 3K is going to be 3K squared, okay? Plus K times 7, 7K plus 2 times 3, 6K plus 2 times 5, 10. All over 2 is equal to what we have on the right. Alright, so. Oh, what do we have here? 7k plus 6k. 6 and 6, 12, 1, 13. That's 13k. So we have plus 13k plus 10. We seem to have a quadratic expression in k up here, up top here. Now, we could multiply out what is on top of the 2 over here and see if it is similar to the k 3k squared plus 13k plus 10. We could also factorize what we have on the left up top and see if it is similar to the k plus 1. 3k plus 10. Um, as a means of remembering our factorization, instead of multiplying out the right up top here to make it look like this, let's factorize what we have on the left to make it look like this. Well, assuming that we're on the right track and didn't make any mistake, we should be able to factorize it. AC method. We have 3 times 10 is 30. 3 by 10 equals 30. 
we think of two numbers that multiply to give 30 and add to give 13. Well, 10 and 3 quickly come to mind. 10, 3 is 30. 10 plus 3 is 13. Right. So it's 10 and 3. So here, at one end, we have 3k squared. At the other end, we have plus 10. But in the middle now, we're going to break up 13k into 10k plus 3k or 3k plus 10k doesn't matter which one I put first so plus 10k plus 3k all over 2 so we group and factorize again this is equal to what we have on the right I soon rewrite it can't be bothered to be writing it over and over but I'll soon write it 3k squared plus 10k. Come and factor is k. Inside the bracket we have 3k plus 10. Alright. Factorize 3k plus 10. Well the common factor is 1. So it's plus 1. Inside the bracket 3k plus 10. Alright. All over 2 equals what you have on the right. So being that 3k plus 10 is a common factor, I'm going to put it outside the bracket, 3k plus 10. It's in the other bracket is k plus 1 divided by 2, equal. Alright, what did we have here? k plus 1, 3k plus 10 over 2, alright. There's k plus 1, 3k plus 10 over 2. It's just that we had the k plus 1 in the second position. But let's move it over here and move the 3k plus 10. Let's move it a bit further here. And then the 3k plus 1, put it back here. So what we have on the left matches what we have on the right. So the equation is proved.